check out our online store where we work with our graphic designer to create stunning garment and product designs that feature a wide variety of aircraft types such as British fighters, World War II aircraft, American bombers, Russian fighters and much more. You can pick your favourite designs and personalise any items within our Redbubble store that range from clothing right the way through to stationery. All of our designs feature our logo so you can show your support for the channel while getting a quality product. You can head to our website aircrewinterview.tv and click store or go to redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash AC interview. Thank you and enjoy. You know with an airframe like that, you've got a world beaten. Yeah. You know, because it it can dominate the battle space. It can be up at 55,000 feet going supersonic, super cruising, that sort of thing. So as you know, in a, once we started the operational squadron, we'd ironed out all the kinks in the aeroplane. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, I loved it where we'd come in, a four ship of us be fighting a, a bunch of F3s and you know, just simple things where the F3s weren't used to putting their radars all the way up here where we were coming in from above the contrails. Yeah. You know, you're not going to see us visually. And because you are so high and so fast, you impart additional energy onto your missiles. So you, now you've got ranges that we hadn't seen before on this typhoon. And we were, you know, cleaning up. It was utterly brilliant. I feel sorry for the F3 because that's my favorite aircraft. <laughs> it sounds like it didn't. I'm not taking it away from those guys. <laughs> they just hadn't fought, yeah. you know, something uh, like us before. They soon worked it out, you know, yeah. and then it was a, uh, you know, a much mm -hmm. harder fight. Actually, I've done three tours on Typhoon. So wow. that my first tour uh, was on three squadron um, as that first operational squadron. Uh, my second tour was when I came in as the officer commanding operations wing at, uh, at Coningsby, uh, where I deployed on various things uh, with the Typhoon. Um, and the third one was as station commander, where I kept my hand in, mainly did quick reaction alert missions, but actually flew in Malaysia, flew in Japan, flew in the States, flew with F-35, F-22. Uh, along the way, so you know, learned a lot about what we term fourth, fifth gen integration. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, a fantastic aeroplane, got about 700 hours on the uh, on the Typhoon, and uh, I sum it up as a world beater. Yeah. Um, I absolutely loved my time on the F-16, mm -hmm. and I loved that aeroplane for what it was. I think with Typhoon, you've got a level above, mm -hmm. um, just because of the capability, the platform. So, you know, where you've already got an amazing defensive aid subsuite, you know, sensors on it, targeting pods, um, the ability to carry a range of missiles, um, you know, Storm Shadow, Meteor now. Meteor, yeah. I talked about long range of AMRAAM. Meteor is a whole different game now that you've got a ramjet uh, engined yeah. air to air missile. Yeah. That does turn Typhoon into something that people need to be worried about. Um, really? I think they were already. Yeah. And in terms of that dogfighting BFM, uh, Lots and lots of lots of BFM engagements, uh, you know, lost a few, won most, um, but even against F-22, you know, I went up and did uh, yeah. on, uh, a couple of BFM engagements against F-22. Actually, it was 2-1 to him, stupid mistake on my part, but the first one, suddenly this F-22 is really worried that I've now, um, uh, you know, beaten him. Is it because it has is it something called excess power which gives you that ability yeah, so to... Yeah, so specific excess power yeah. only, uh, you know, is ultimately means that uh, you have more power than you weigh. So um, I, I talked about BFM, I'm gonna, people will get me on YouTube now for hands in the bar. But you know, if someone's turning and you start to turn into them, on an F-16, you'd turn, you'd keep pulling, keep pulling, the jet would start to bleed a bit of, uh, of energy, yeah. depending on where you were, altitude or, or down low. In a typhoon, more often than not, if you didn't break the back of it or come back on the power, you would sustain 9G in that turn. The other person's normally going downhill. Yeah. And so, um, you know, you'd be pulling 9G the whole time and the aeroplane could sustain it, uh, which is utterly ridiculous in terms of power. Yeah. Um, uh, I was writing something the other day for someone who'd asked me about Typhoon versus Spitfire. And, you know, people are getting, well, can a Spitfire turn tightly or anything? It doesn't matter. A typhoon would just go straight, straight up, up, wait. Yeah until the Spitfire falls off and then you're back down on it. You know, the ability to go up in that dogfighting arena. Someone asked on Twitter, actually, well, is dogfighting relevant these days? Mm. You know, we haven't shot anyone down since the Falklands. Yeah. Well, actually, with all of the quick reaction alert stuff that we're doing and intercepting Russian fighters, I think it is enormously relevant because you wouldn't want to put pilot, if I was a pilot intercepting that Russian or whoever, 
I wouldn't want to be in the position where I didn't know what to do if something happened. Now we can hope that it, nothing is going to happen, but I want to know what to do if something happens. But it's the same mistake well, they did with the Phantom. They didn't put a gun in and that was, you know, a silly mistake. So There was a long history with the gun in Typhoon, but it absolutely the right thing to put the, uh, yeah. to put the gun back on there for that particular mission.